Okay, so I'm going to do a little introduction and let Tracy get into her class, okay? So Tracy is uh, a veteran real estate agent. She just made five-time icon. She'll get the official five-time icon agent, okay? She is a she's a mother she's a partner with her husband she's a leader she's a listing superstar okay the biggest thing is sellers want options right and it's like if you're just telling them what they want and what they need sometimes they feel intimidated or they don't have the power and yeah you know uh what i want to do for you guys today is really just take in just some, a lot of the pieces that I've learned over time from multiple coaches. And I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, when I first got in this industry 19 years ago, you know, in my mind, it was like, okay, it's my way. And I was almost like stubborn to learning and just trying to figure it out on my own and not just utilizing the people around me. And when it came down to it, it's like, this real estate industry has just thousands and thousands of top producers across the country doing more volume than you every single day. So why not learn from the best and replicate exactly what they're doing? Cause it's proven to work. So after years of trying to do the things that don't work, now we've really tried to master and focus on, on the things that do work. And, uh, the one thing we've been able to do since partnering up with EXP is really dive in on our listing presentations to always be an open-minded where we're always not going in with one option. It's more having like five options for every single seller. So no matter what their goals are, no matter what the current condition is, you can structure yourself to becoming more of a personal investor, a flipper, uh, have rental properties. And so all that those pieces started from the listing presentation of going in with an open mind. And one of the biggest things that I was always trained is you list, you last. And it's like using that as a marketing billboard. Um, I think that is just super key. The biggest thing is sellers want options, right? And it's like, if you're just telling them what they want and what they need, sometimes they feel intimidated or they don't have the power. And so, the one thing I've always done is like, hey, ultimately seller, you're the one that picks the listing price. I'm just here to support you and give you all the tools so we can strategize what's going to get you the highest price in the end. And it's like, basically like when you're going in for that final like closure of where, how they're going to sell is I'll ultimately say, hey, being part of EXP, you know, we have so many different tools and what I've done as an agent with my experience and my connections, if I've designed it where I have five different ways that you're going to be able to choose to sell your home and you pick what's best for you. And that has positioned me to get more investment properties. It's positioned me to be able to always be able to get that listing because now they can't decide another agent because I didn't give them options or that agent had a better option. I'm giving them all the options so they can definitely choose me in the end. Number one is express offers. Express offers is, um, it's available through being an EXP agent. That is, you, they put investors that qualify into this bank and then you can submit a home through there and they're gonna actually offer like under, it's usually 70% of market value, but then they take off another 20% for repairs. It is extremely low, you guys, but it is a tool that you can use that you have express offers on a national platform for investors to buy. My number four is now I have local investors that I can connect with right away and get you a cash offer locally because all of you guys have business partners or probably people with money that want to invest, right? And so it's like, no matter who you are, you got somebody that's going to want to invest. Number four is local investors. Number three is my husband and I, we actually have a hard money line and we can buy a home cash in two weeks and we can take out all of our fees. So I basically say, hey, my husband and I have positioned ourselves. We can make a cash offer to you if it's the right package and makes sense for you. And we will actually reduce all our fees and not charge you a dollar. And you'll know exactly what you're getting on closing day. Then number two is we can take it to market as is. You don't do a thing. We take it to market. We leverage everyone against each other. 
And then number one, hey, let's go all in. You have a phenomenal home. I really think it's gonna be in your best interest. If we leverage every single buyer against each other, you do this little cheat sheet, I'll come in and help you stage. We'll do the professional photography. We're gonna syndicate this to every single site out there. We're gonna do reverse prospecting and we are gonna basically market this to the masses and bring you the highest net in the shortest period of time and go all in. And so it's like, which one, and, and you know, at this time now, like I'll do, I'll do those five and get back with them on the next day because then I usually know where they're at and then I'm going to give a little bit more energy to what one they're falling in the best fit for. Because if it's a hoarded house, it's an estate, they're probably going to be more in the bottom three, right? So I'm not going to really want to hype up one. It's going to be like, oh my God, you would have so much time, so much effort to get this house ready. Do you really want all these people coming through your home? <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's like, you know, kind of setting them up. <laughs> And then, then I'll give them just a little printout um, of follow-up the next day and I'll do the five and I'll have it highlighted on every net they would get. And typically I'll highlight which one I'm thinking is the best fit or which one is, you know, going to just make sense as a win-win for everybody. I love that you get five options like that. That is incredible. I love it. All that. right. Now, list you last, the way they say the list you last, it's, you know, if you're only a buyer's agent, how many of you guys have just been running around crazy, showing homes and just never being able to get that actual deal put together? <laughs> I mean, you run ragged and you know, it's like one of those things when you list, you put that sign in the yard, a lot of your efforts, a lot of your work going at the front of the transaction. And so it's like you do the work up front, then once you put the sign in the yard, it's gonna sell itself and you are going to use that as a marketing billboard on social media, campaigns, your own sphere. And so it just allows you to have a lot more opportunity to grow at a quicker rate. Um, I want to go back to, because I am a success coach and, you know, we have now an organization of 50 people um, through EXP. And one thing I've always done is just try to do self-improvement and give that back. And I think, you know, it comes back to always trying to figure out, you know, why are you in this business? Why did you go get that real estate license? And it's like, if you don't know your why, if you don't know why you're doing this and you're just going through the motion, are you really going to have the results that you crave? And so it's like, I challenge you guys to kind of go back to why, why are you in this business and how do you define success? And it's like Webster's dictionary definition, you know, the way the success defines there, it's what you want. It is like success is what you truly want. And like for us, it is financial freedom. I mean, that is what my family has been after is creating financial freedom to live the way we want to live every single day. And in order to, you know, be in that mindset, you want to have balance, right? And it's like, you want to sell a hundred homes, you know, are you going to be able to sell a hundred homes and still be married at the end of the year or still have, you know, kids that you're caring for and give them the attentive time that they need. And so I think it's really important, you know, with your business is first get set on why are you doing this and figuring out like this success circle. This is really going to define that balance in your life to say, all right, be real with yourself. You know, are you a seven in the work and your money and finance business section? And if you're a seven, how do you get to an eight? If your relationships are at a three, do you think you need to give more time to relationships right now in order to just have that fulfillment in life? And the key is to get that smooth circle. So it's like, if you're going to be a roller coaster ride and be really high, like on wellness or social, and then really low, like on purpose and relationship, it's like your day is just going to be a roller coaster. And so this is just a really cool graph for yourself on figuring out, okay, what number are you at in each category? And if you're at a four, what can you do to focus on getting to a six? And it's like, if you can really focus on all these areas this will in turn help your business, help you grow and just help live a better life. 
Now, when I, I'm a competitive girl, I played freaking every sport there was in high school. And I was like, I had 12 varsity letters and four sports. And then I go and I graduate college and I get into real estate. And for the first few years, I plateaued at $4 million. And it's like, I couldn't get out over that 4 million hump. I was just like there, I was doing well. And everybody's like, Tracy, why aren't you selling more than 4 million? And you know, for a few years, it's like I'd graduated college. I did not set any goals for myself. Here I was competitive all the way through college with sports. I mean, just setting huge goals, going after it, attacking it, knowing exactly what I wanted. And for the first few years in real estate, I'm just coasting, swimming, you know, just kind of going through the motion one deal at a time. And I never challenged myself to say, okay, what do I really want? And how do I go about it? And so one of the coaches I've had in the past, Sean Kokoska, he actually challenged us to do a hundred things of what we want in life. And it's like, you can separate it of like wellness, personal, financial, but if you guys have never done this, this is a really good exercise to really challenge yourself because once you know what you want, you're going to be a lot more aggressive at going after it. And keep Tracy, going. Real, real quickly, um, yeah. just so they understand, what is 4 million in units? House is sold for the year on average for you? Uh, 4 million probably would have been like, uh, I would have said probably 20 houses maybe. Okay. Yeah, probably like 15 to 20 at that point. My price point was a little lower at that age when I first got in. So, um, you know, it's one of those things where I was not selling two a month. I remember that. And, and it was just like, I was trying to get to more of a, an award and that award was going to be about 8 million. And it was like, damn, I'm only halfway there. And I was just stuck. And, and honestly, the biggest change was joining a mastermind group and being part of accountability and actually, you know, setting my goals, creating my vision board, and then being around people every week where they had to check in on you and you had to do it. Otherwise, if you showed up and you didn't do it, I mean, you're the one that's got to sit there and have everybody else get in the ways and, you know, you just feel like shit. <laughs> um now, when it comes to listing appointments, this is what's exciting is I want to give you just a few little tricks before you go into the listing appointment. So, you know, the biggest thing is you got about 30 seconds to develop a rapport when you go into a listing appointment and rapport is going to be a feeling of liking. It allows you to help the people without resistance and it really does affect the trust level. And the number one thing you're after is their trust. And so I'm going to go over a few little tips real quick on when you're going into an appointment, just really how you can get into that rapport very quickly in order to make that actual listing appointment convert into results. Number one thing, physiology. Um, it's one of those things where, you know, we've gone to a lot of text uh, in the last few years with real estate where when I first got in, it was like faxing contracts. And so it's like the progression of real estate on where we're at, you know, I've seen just a lot of people getting lazy with text and what you're going to see on this graph, if you only do a text, you are actually only going to get, be able to get 7% of hundred percent on that communication and that connection. And so it's like what you really got to focus on from day one, when you walk in that front door is that physiology 50, 5% of your communication comes from your posture, your gestures, your facial expressions, how you're breathing. And then it's going to be your tonality. 38% of your communication is your tone, your speed, how fast you're going, your loudness. And so when it comes down to words, and if you're just doing a text or a text to get a listing appointment or a FISBO, you really only got a 7% chance of conversion where if you can get in front of the door or get on a zoom, be able to physiology, have that be present, that tonality, be able to connect with them. And then also use the words, your percentage of converting and building that rapport is going to be so much higher. 
And one of the biggest things that you can do right from the get go, it's called a pace pace lead. And with the pace pace lead, this is going to be like pacing occurs when you match or mirror someone else's body language, tonality, or the words. And mirroring is done by just reflecting back on exactly what they're doing. Um, let me give you an example. Let's say you are meeting a buyer at a home and you guys go into the kitchen and you start in the kitchen. They lean up against on the island. Now, if they put one elbow on the island and let's say they're talking pretty fast and they got a lot of energy, I'd be able to kind of keep up with just doing probably similar to just my normal speed and my tonality. Now, if it's someone older, they're talking really slow, they got their elbow on. All right, now what do I got to do? I got to tone it back. Now I got to go slower. I got to lower my voice. And if they go their elbow up, I'm going to go on that island right across from them and I'm going to do my elbow up. Then if they come off, I come off. And if you can do a pace, pace, do a mirror, mirror two times in a row, then you should be able to go into rapport and now you're leading. And sometimes if like you do it where it's like a, you do the pace, pace, and you don't feel like you get in the lead, you can actually go and do it all over again. Let's say now they moved and now they're kind of hunched. Now they're kind of leaning back. Well, then you can kind of go lean back a little bit. Then if they lean forward, you can lean forward and then go into that lead. But this is something to practice with family at dinners on Sundays, um, just wherever you're at, it's like, it's one of those things, always just try to match who you're in front of in order to make them comfortable and build that rapport quickly. All right, so now, you know, you got some of these tips and tricks. All right, now the, now the fun really starts. So, you know, when you, Basically, when I set up an appointment in the listing, um, when I arrive, it's like one of those things where I got one question that I really, truly want to find out from that seller. And that one question is going to be, what's their problem? They got to sell or they want to sell or they need to sell. Is there, do they have a third kid on the way? They have no storage. They don't have an extra bedroom. Um, are they 65 years old? The wife just went through a knee surgery and they got a split entry and she can't get the groceries up. Are they a family that's downsizing? Maybe the husband lost their job. Maybe they're a couple monthly payments behind and they just don't know what to do. Whenever someone is going to be selling, it's like you really got to focus on getting in to figuring out, okay, why, why, why did they call me? And why do they want or need to sell? Because I'm going to be able to go back to that every time they maybe get comfortable or before negotiations, it's taking them back to, well, do you remember that knee? I mean, how many more years do you think you can use that knee to get those groceries into that kitchen and that split entry? Can you visualize yourself if you had the kitchen right off the garage with only one stair? How would your life change? Tell me more about that. Like, wh where would you have your ideal kitchen from your actual garage? Make them visualize it. Make them see it. Or if they have a fourth kid on the way, it's like, how would that feel to give all your three kids their own bedrooms? And if you guys don't choose to do that, how do you see structuring it right now of making this house work for the next five years? And make them see their problem, make them visualize what they really want. So whenever you're starting to lose them, you can go back to really why they're calling in the first place. And, you know, I think it, it's, it's really important too to just always have them in the mindset of, okay, it's like to get them to that positive future, you have to have them in what is the negative future? What's that going to look like if they don't move? What does that look like now? How does it feel now? And then what could it look like tomorrow if you found it? And what could that look like five years from now? And so it's like the circle of psychology of trying to, you know, really get them to see currently where they're at, feel that negative, feel if they don't make a change, how that's going to feel. And then going into that vision of, wow, 
you can do this. You've worked hard. You're in a position. We can make this happen and making them see it. Um, okay, so now you get to the front door. You know, you've done your little CMAs. And I'll give you guys some fun resources, too, you can print out today. But you get to the front door. First thing out of respect, it's always handshake, back to the basics, look them in the eyes, be firm, give them that strong handshake, come in with that confidence. If you're newer, fake it. Fake it till you make it. I mean, everyone starts brand new at some point. And if you're at that stage now or just have a few underneath your belt, I mean, this is where you fake it till you make it. And it's like, all right, you get to the door, confidence. I always ask just politely, can I take my shoes off? Even if they don't think you need to, I usually do just out of respect. And then it's like, now you want to just open up with being comfortable. And the most comfortable way is just to be on the move by getting a tour. And so the last thing I want to do is go sit down and just start drilling them. I really want to build that rapport face to face with a tour. So I go, hey, let's start off with a tour. Go ahead and lead the way. And I'm always looking like, you know, you're very attentive again. I have a notebook or an iPad, whatever you're comfortable with, but take notes, show you care about their home. And I'll ask just casually when we're going around, hey, what are some of the features that drew you to the house when you bought it? What are some of the improvements that you've done over time since living here? And then casually while we're walking around, I'm looking for like photos on the wall of their little Johnny in baseball. And it's like, oh, you know, is this your son? He plays baseball. Oh, what team is he on? Is this his favorite sport? And getting to the point where, you know, you're personalizing it, keeping it comfortable and looking for things that you could see as common interest on bringing up conversation through the actual tour. And then also I'm doing a little cheat sheet of things that like when I give them five options to sell, one option is going to be to do a cheat sheet. We're going to spruce it up, put lipstick on, take it full to marketing. And I want to have that little cheat sheet. So they're going to be able to go back and reference, you know, maybe touch up paint in the bathroom and the kids is back. Maybe caulking in the master bathroom. Um, maybe there is a stain that could use a little kills. Um, landscaping when I pulled in, maybe sprucing up, you know, bringing in some mulch, getting some of the weeds out. So just little things. And then I'll also take pictures and I'll go, hey, do you mind if I take a few pictures just so I can reference? So I'm creating my portfolio for staging and I'll take some pictures just so I'll have a little catalog on able to reference um, exactly, you know, just everything that I'm going to be able to go over to get their house market ready. Okay, so now you've done the tour, you've built that rapport. Um, and, you know, I've even had some agents lately who have a ton of energy and one of them lost a listing like two weeks ago. And the reason they said they lost the listing because they followed up is they said that they just didn't show enough passion in their home. And I'll tell you, like, if you go in there and it is the ugliest looking home, it has got ugly green carpet, you compliment, compliment the wall color. <laughs> you find something because is somebody going to want you to list their home if you're not excited about it? Crazy. That's not the first time I've heard that in the last two weeks. Someone else that, and she was a top listing agent. They just said she showed more appreciation for her home. And, and it is. And it's just like, you just can't take that for granted. And so no matter what type of home, if it's an estate and it's the siblings, they probably live there. That's their home. And if it's, you know, needs so many repairs and it's looking rough, focus on the quality of what it could look like and the potential and how beautiful and historic um, the architecture is. And you just got to find things in order to bring that excitement to the table because, yeah, they're only looking to hire somebody that's going to be passionate and want to sell their home. All right. So now you've gone on the tour. Now it's like, okay, um, is there somewhere comfortable we can sit? So you're asking them, hey, where's somewhere comfortable we can sit? I brought some comps. I'd love to kind of walk you through more just about what, um, what the timeline and what the marketing plan is I can offer you. So when you sit down, it's like you're sitting down at this chair. And, you know, the biggest thing is, is again, coming back to their why. And I'll always start off with basically saying, hey, all right, share more with me. 
if you could have the perfect timeline, when would you want the check in hand and what day would you want to give up possession? And it's like, come on, give me dates. And it's like, if you could have an offer dropped off on your porch today, what if somebody just came and dropped off an offer on your porch? What would that closing date and possession date look like? What would that offer price look like? And it's like kind of getting them to really open up what that would look like. So then now you know how to deliver and work it backwards. And I think so many people sometimes go into these listing appointments and when they get to that time when they're sitting down, it, it's kind of like that vomit and they're vomiting about themselves. And, and it's like, you do need to go in strong about yourself and the company and all the marketing that you can provide, but it also starts with them. And it's like, you just have to get their why. And it's like, if the timeline is, hey, we need the funds, you know, in order to move forward. Now it's a completely different ball game. If it's, I own my house outright and I'm just looking for a downsized ranch. It's like, now, you know, you can casually not focus on their listing right now. Now it's all about the buy side. And so I'm really trying to dig on their financials, you know, how much equity they have in the home. Um, ideally what it's always cash to close too. I use always use monthly. What do you want your monthly payments to look like? And what would be your cash to close on your next home? Cause now I got to just structure this. And it's like, if I know what they need cash to close, now I not, might need the number that I need to get out of their current home and see if this is feasible. Otherwise we're going to have to see if they have extra savings or if there's a family member that's going to come into the game. So I think you, you just, when you're in a listing appointment, if they're going to sell, they're going to have to go somewhere, right? And I think so many people go in there and just want to get the listing sign. And it's like, hey, that will all fall into place if you can figure out a solution to their problem, right? So if I can figure out that they got to buy and it's exactly what I know they need, now I know how to structure that. And so I think it's just really important to figure out where that person's at before you start going into your own marketing. Um, and so then I'll kind of flip it. And now I know, now I know what they're looking for. I've gotten them to visualize this kitchen. Tell me more about those cabinets. What would your countertops look like? You know, what's your backyard, your lifestyle. And so I've kind of flipped it on now picturing where they want to go. So they're getting excited to what? Sell. And it's like, you got to get them excited to buy before they're sell or know where they're going. Um, this is a quote I would love for you guys to just memorize because this is something on phone consultations, on listing appointments. This is something that was taught to me like 15 years ago from a guy that was number one in Texas. And still to this day, I use this all the time. I mean, it's just keep it simple. Net the highest price possible in the shortest period of time with li as little inconvenience to you as possible. And it's one of those things where you memorize this because anytime on a phone and anytime, you know, you kind of get off track with a buyer or seller and it's like, Hey, I'm just trying to net you the highest possible price in the shortest period of time with as little inconvenience to you as possible. And it's like, that is what everybody wants. They don't want the stress. They want this to be smooth. They want that price, that highest price possible on closing day. And you know, um, a lot of people will go into, you know, um, oh, just, you know, what's your commission? And it's like, hey, I would love to handle that and walk you through it all. And again, you know, is it the commission you're concerned about or is it the net and the check that you'd be getting at closing? What's more important to you? And it's always like sidetracking them and taking them back to really what you're trying to do. And that's the check at closing, check at closing. It doesn't matter about anything else. And now to get that check at closing, there's always four reasons a home sells. It's going to be price and you're going to help. And it's like, all right, I'm going to help you walk through this pricing. I'm going to go over the comps. We're going to figure out where an appraiser is going to come in and actually, you know, come in and evaluate your home and what they're going to be able to actually get it to appraise at. Location. It's like if they back up to a busy street, 
It's like, hey, you know, you're in a phenomenal location. Unfortunately, with backing up to a busy street, you know, probably six out of the 10 buyers might be interested. So we're just going to lose that 40% right from the get go. So we just have to be aware. But again, it only takes one. We just got to be aware. And your location is fabulous. It's just backing up to that busy street. We're going to have to compensate for that. And then always the condition of the property. And it's always the condition. If it's price right, the location's awesome. Then, you know, if you're a weekend and it's not selling, it's either going to be price, location, or the condition. And this is where I'll always go. And the agent you select. So you have control over all these and, you know, it's always going to be based on that agent you select with that marketing plan, who's going to be able to do the job and net you the highest price in the shortest period of time with as little inconvenience to you as possible. And, uh, you know, this is just a good thing. Like whenever something's not selling these four reasons, it just kind of comes back to the basics and it's like, um, those are just things to take yourself out of it. And I always take myself out of it and blame the market. You know, if somebody's talking about like, if you're on the market for a week and it's not selling, then it's like, they're wanting to have a phone consultation about price. Am I going to say, get on the phone and go, Oh, well, I told you it was going to be overpriced. No, it's like, Hey, now the market, we took it to full market. We've done everything right. Now the market is telling us you're just not the clear choice at this price. Always use the market. Um, when I get down and I'm sitting down with them and I'll go over, I have a listing book. I'm going to show you guys too. And I'm more than welcome to share the templates too with you on Canva, but this is like a really good graph. This is kind of old school, but it's a good way to show people. It's like, Hey, when we're going to go through pricing, it's like, you know, if you want to go above market price, what's going to happen is you're only going to have 30% of the buyers are going to be willing to want to buy your house. And if you go up even another notch over that, you're only going to have one out of every 10 buyers that's going to be interested in your home if you choose to go on the extreme high end of pricing. Now, on the flip side, if you go extra aggressive and go, you know, under market value, now it's like, wow. Now you're going to get 90% of the entire market and leverage every single person against each other in order to really let the market determine where you're going to fall. And so I think this is a, going to be an important piece more than ever as we're kind of going through a transitional market is really showing this graph to them saying, hey, hey, Mr. Seller, I understand you think your house is worth 435000 and it's just going back to the comps. It's like from an appraiser standpoint, you know, typically like 80% of the homes are probably going to have a loan. And if you can net the highest price with a loan, we need to leverage buyers against each other in order to get you the cleanest terms. And if we can leverage the buyers against each other and we even go over an appraised value by leveraging, I can negotiate those actual appraisal gaps coverages. And so it's like, that is the biggest thing I think with even for sale by owners. And when you go high on pricing, if you only get one buyer, how do you leverage all your terms and get what you want as a seller? You know, your, your hands are tied. You just have no power. And it's like to have power is leverage. And if you can almost create more of an auction in order to create them, highest amount of buyers, the highest amount of interest in that shortest period of time, you bring them all, you attack the market, you let the market determine where you fall. And there's just no way to go wrong. And, uh, you know, it's just like, I always refer it to, it's like prom. You walk in a prom and you got like 15 seconds as that door opens to make that first grand impression to everybody in that gymnasium. And you will never get those 15 seconds back. And it's like with a house, when you take that full to market, that syndicates over 300 websites. Even if you would do a cancel and relist two weeks later, it's never going to be that same moment. And so timing is everything and really pricing it effectively from the get go is so important. Um, and this is, again, kind of just that graph. It's like, OK, weeks on the market. I mean, it just tanks. 
And so it's always like, all right, Mr. Seller, you know, I know I always let my sellers determine exactly where they want to price at me in. My job is to educate you on what the market's doing right now, what we're seeing in order to position you the best. Now, if you want to go at 345,000, it's like, and the appraisers are only going to give you 300,000, you know, what's the buyers going to think? Are they going to think you're the clear choice? It's like, do you want to be the clear choice, Mr. Seller? Now, when it comes to commission, um, there's a few different ways that, you know, I've seen huge amounts of success. And I think the biggest thing is just to be confident and to go in there and whatever you go in and whatever you do, just be confident. And that is the way to secure it and not have questions. Um, but like, this is a way that some people will do like a three tier where you can go in and just basically lay this out and most of the time people will pick the 6% plan just because that 5% doesn't really give you the full marketing plan and that full package of exposure. And then sometimes the 7% is a little more extreme where they don't feel like they need a home warranty. They don't feel like they need the 360 virtual tour. And so it's like figuring out what you're comfortable with on commission. And another thing is always kind of um, going into like this, the cow, I'll go to another little pyramid too. Um, this was a good little script too that I've seen. So it's like when you go in for the pricing, um, this is a this is just a good story that I came across from another coach. And it's like, okay, this would be a first sale by owner that you're trying to get as a listing. Let's just say that you're gonna buy a watch at a jewelry store. You can see the watch. You want it in the glass case. It's brand new, still in the box, and the price tag is wrapped around the band of the watch. Let me ask, how much would you expect to pay for that watch at the jewelry store? Probably the retail price, right? So now let's take that same watch. If it's still in the box, it's never been worn, and the price tag is still on the watch, and let's put it in the garage sale. Now, how much would you expect to get for that watch? A lot less, right? So it's one of those things where, you know, for sale by owners, they only convert usually 17%, if not less, when they go on the market. They are not leveraging anybody against each other. They are not getting out in front of 100% of the market. And it's like, it's all about where you position the marketing, where you put it out there, how you go about it. And it's just one of those things, you can have the same item, that for sale by owner can have that same house, but if they don't do the proper marketing and put it in the right places, are they going to be able to get the same results? And so this was just a really cool little script I came across. Um, okay, I want to go into the my little listing book and show you guys here. Let's see. Tracy, can I back up a little bit? Yeah. Um, and ask a question. So you were talking about being at the table and going into their why, right? Why they're selling. When somebody calls and asks you to list their house, let's say it's an online lead, it's a referral, um, do you do a pre-qualification for the lead um, and then take them back when you're in front of them, back to their why, or you just take the appointment? What's your process? You know, I think the biggest thing is getting the appointment. And, you know, I, for buyers, I do a lot longer of a phone consultation. It's more really trying to get into more depth for a buyer on the phone because now we're going to be kind of out and about and meeting at different homes and might not have as much one-on-one -on -one time. Now, for my listing appointment, I just know the more that I can get in front of them and, again, have 100% of the physiology, the tonality, and be able to bring my words with that instead of just being on the phone and them not being able to see me if I'm not on Zoom, it's like my conversion rate is going to be a lot higher. So my main thing is figuring out, hey, what's your next available appointment um, that you can make work for me to just stop by real quick, take a tour, I'll bring some comps and just really be able to give you a quick cheat sheet of how to prepare when the time is right for you. And so it's just, man, get in that house, like get that tour of being able to get your eyes on the property. So then you can build that rapport and, 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 the, and the sooner and the sooner, the better, even if they're like, Hey, can you come by tonight? Like make it work. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. And I'll always have like at least three listing books printed at one time. So I always have it ready to go. And it, and it's one of those things like when you, you know, when you're on that phone call and they want to sell and it's like, they just, they want you to come over and take a look at the property. You know, it, it's like the biggest thing is figuring out, um, you know, just, oh, okay. Like, uh, you know, have you found anything that you're going to be moving to? Are you relocating or do you know where you're going to be going? So I think that's important is, do you know where you're going to be going or so now I know if I'm really going into just a listing and it's relo or if they've they're buying mom and dad's house and I won't be involved on that. I, I do kind of want to know just how it's stacking up on that next step just so I can plan accordingly when I come. Because if they need to buy, then I'm probably going to bring more. I'm going to actually bring my buyer's book and I'm going to bring some additional things on the buy side because I'm going to need to get them excited to buy. Okay. And then one quick question, which um, I know that everyone's going to want to know, how many homes now are you selling a year on average? Like you just made five-time icon, but how many units is that? Yeah, um, I average about 50. And, you know, out of 50 homes, this is what's interesting is no matter what, every single year of my entire career, I am always 50-50 at the end of the year for buy sells. And I don't plan it that way. Um, it is just one of those, I love being on the buyer side to still be able to negotiate, still stay in tuned on that side, but I've made it a lot more operational where I have a transaction coordinator that's licensed, that writes all my offers. I have showing agents on call if I can't show. So I still want to be like in the negotiation game on the buy side, because a lot of times I'll have families that are more move up and they're going to have a home to sell and buy. And it's one of those with the price points and how it falls is I love to be able to kind of help them connect all the dots, but then delegate some of the things that I might not enjoy or are not useful to my time, like doing the transaction coordinating and um, and like my licensed transaction coordinator, she can write the actual offer. So like if I'm at a home and I, and my buyer sees it and there's other people in there and I know it's going to go quick, I can actually text her the terms. She can have it drawn up in about 20 minutes. Um, we just have the process all designed to get it out. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's been pretty fun being able to stay in tuned on both. Well, and I can see that it gives you time for your family. You guys, Chris Nolan does the same thing. His offers are ready to go and his transaction coordinator writes them up and send, sends them to him. And, and the thing, you know, with the buyers is like the control of the time. As I got older and more in this industry, it was like, you know, the buyers, they run you crazy on the weekends, on nights. I mean, you just, you know, do you have any control over a buyer's schedule? You don't. And it's like with a listing, I have complete control. I mean, I always usually have Monday, Tuesdays available for staging. I like to do professional pictures on Wednesdays. I like to have all my pictures back by Wednesday night. I like to take my houses to the market Thursday morning, about three in the morning. So now it's synced. It's ready to be out for Thursdays. Then we'll be able to launch like a power open house with another agent so she can pick up leads. Um, and then it's like kind of a science of how you can lay it out. And it's like most of the time with my listings is, I mean, I'm, I'm coaching a softball team that, um, I mean, we're 12 tournaments out of town <laughs> and, and it's like, I'm gone on the weekends. I got a national baton twirler. I mean, we go crazy and I travel a lot. And so it's like, when I get a listing, I know I can stage Tuesday at noon. I can have my photographer come right after. And then it's like, all right, we can go live Thursday. And do I need to be in my present city Friday, Saturday, Sunday to sell this house? What I loved about what you said is you already have somebody lined up to do the open house as well, right? A lot of Agents don't like to do open houses, even if they need business. So if you ain't going to do it, you guys, like she said, it is brand new to the market. Like have someone do it because your job is to sell that house. And, and it's like you're, it's one of those where um, the thing I love about open houses is it's leverage again, where the people that come in on Thursday, Friday, it's like, all right, if they see an open house, that's going to go Saturday, Sunday, and they really love the home. 
it's going to get them to write an offer quicker before that open house. And it's going to get them to come in aggressive because they're going to be afraid to lose it to the open house. So I always tell my seller, I'm like, hey, let's have a couple days, get some high traffic private showings in. Then as a backup plan, let's market that open house. That'll create more interest to them putting the pen to the paper before the open. Then if no offers are in before the open house, that's our backup plan to get more traffic through and keep strategizing so we can keep being aggressive and mixing up the marketing. Good stuff. Um, this is the listing book I made out of Canva. And this is a template that it works pretty good where it's like a template that I can share with agents and they can just plug in on like three pages, their custom information and the rest is already built out. And so it's like, it is so important. I feel like, you know, a lot of people will do it on an iPad or a virtual presentation. And I think that's awesome. The main thing I've ran into is I love having something absolutely beautiful like art on their kitchen counter or on their end table when I leave that listing. So all week, who are they gonna have to look at and who are they gonna have to remember? So uh, what I've done is, um, you know, I've just really had it structured where we've made this book beautiful, where it, it really, you know, creates more credibility if you're newer to, where you can even take like business partners and combine your actual volume. It's like, that's how you fake it to make it. You don't have to put, I've sold three houses. You can put between me and my business partners at EXP, we've sold over a hundred million. And it's like, you know, you have these communities, you have these masterminds, you have, you know, these families. And it's like, you guys can all pull together on your numbers and it's not misleading. And it's like one of those things, you are collaborating with these people and together, this is what you guys are producing. And so, yeah, so this is just like a little content. This is how you can kind of customize it. Um, you know, then I, I kind of will skip through a lot of this, but this is where I'll get it out and I'll be like, hey, here's my little Bible to selling. This is going to be step by step, just what to expect in the entire marketing plan of every single thing I'm going to do. And it's like, um, you know, we're going to, we've already kind of touched base on pricing. You'll see like with the negotiations. Um, and these are just some of the graphs that I threw up for you guys, but making it beautiful in the book for the actual seller. And it's like the biggest thing is talking to them on, hey, 93% of all buyers use the internet. And it's like, chances are they're going to fall in love with it online. You know, I'm with someone, I don't use the word good. I don't use the word great. I don't use big. I use a thesaurus. We take it to the king of the castle. We are going to make your home stand out. And it's like one of the, it, you just have to really, again, pour passion into their home and how important it is from day one to do all these things up front. And if you don't have a professional photography um, contact available, definitely connect with someone because you know, I went and bought like a $5,000 camera a few years ago and I still couldn't shoot what they shot. And it's like time, everything, just outsource that. And it's like, it's quick. And what I'll do is I offer like, um, to me personally, staging is crucial. And it's like, what you're always going to offer is that professional photography and you pay for it. And it comes out of their net at closing and helping them prepare their home. And it's like, to prepare their home, it's like you want them to have kind of this cheat sheet again, you know, declutter the home. We're going to have you take, I always say, take out, like clean out the bottom of your closets, make your closets look bigger by basically getting everything out of the bottom of those. You know, if your closet is just over populated with sweaters and it's summer, hey, let's go ahead and box some of those out and just condense it. Now we don't want to make it look like it's a divorce and there's just, you know, one thing of clothing and somebody just took everything. And so it's like staging it, spreading things out, declutterizing. And I always say kitchens and bathrooms, scrub them down, get the, you know, it's like, if you don't have your kitchen, your bathrooms clean, the whole home is going to reflect being dirty. And so those are the two things you got to focus on to me personally, um, pets in the property, you're going to have to disclose on the disclosure, but I don't want them to be seen. Um, I was staging last week and I had a cat that actually was attacking me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like usually cats hiss and go away, right? 
well, this cat was hissing coming on my leg. And I'm like, oh my God. And the seller's laughing. And I'm like, just all I'm thinking is how do we find a cat babysitter? <laughs> and, and it worked great. You know, I timed it where they, um, they had two days that we found a lot of times when I go on the market and I know it's going to be a price point that's going to get some traffic in that first couple days and they have kids and pets. I'll be like, Hey, you know what works amazing? If there's any family or a little Airbnb that you guys have been wanting to do a quick getaway, you know, sometimes it can work amazing. We're all come in stage, get the picture guy to come in right after me. Then we'll go on the market on Thursday. And if you take off Friday morning, hopefully we have an offer back or, you know, know exactly where we're at by Saturday afternoon and, you know, be able to have less stress on you and we can get people in the door and just make it a revolving door for those two days. So I always, and it's all how you present it. I'm not saying get your damn cat out of here and get your litter box out of here and your kids are messy. It's, you know, it's like, Hey, take some time for enjoy yourself. Let's get this stage. And then you don't have to deal with the stress of keeping it perfect for the next few days. Well, and what I like about you using a stager, the stuff that you don't tell them about the stager gets to, right? Because that's their professional opinion. And you guys, every one of you guys is with EXP can go into your state group go in your state group and search stager, search photographer. And there's tons of referrals in there if you don't have one. It, it, it's huge. And it's like, you know, the thing like, um, you know, it's like when we're preparing for the house for the market, I'll even tell them, I'll be like, hey, you know, sometimes that dead silence in a home, it's just sometimes awkward. If you have some light music that you can put like light jazz or ocean music, sometimes that can help just set the mood when a buyer walks in. So I will have them put some light music on. I have my sellers turn on every single light. I don't necessarily have them open all the windows just because sometimes I don't want them to be able to see how close the neighbor's homes are. Um, and that's same with photography. I do a lot of angles on photography to train my photographer to, you know, take some pictures of the angles where it's not showing the neighbors in it. Um, through the kitchen, it's not showing the other neighbor in the backyard. We have the blinds just perfect where it's enough of a natural light, but you can't actually see through it. Um, so it's some of those little things where I think less is more online. You, you want to almost create a story and you don't want them to be stuck on six pictures of the living room because maybe they won't even get to the kitchen. You're only going to have like 15 to 30 seconds to really get this buyer to fall in love. And so it's like those first five pictures, you need to have them there can't be one flaw in them. If there is, you crop it, you edit it. Cause it's like, my job is to get them in the front door and I'm not misleading and I'm not, you know, mismarketing this home, but I'm giving them a taste and I want them to get a taste so they can feel it and get in the front door. Cause that's my job. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, with the marketing it's like with EXP too, it's like, gosh, it's like, I always just go into, you know, one of the biggest reasons I joined EXP is because of their marketing program and we are a cloud-based brokerage based out of you know our headquarters is cloud-based i mean the way our technology is designed the way we can connect with the amount of people in such a short period of time no other brokerage can even come close to the amount of collaboration and networking that we have and another thing that just sets us apart is that my old brokerage they used to have a website that had, it looked like it was my own pretty website. When they would go to that, they didn't even come to me on my website. It circled through to whoever was on a phone duty. I didn't even know that for like three years because no one tells you that. It looks like it's your pretty website, but I never tested it as a consumer. And I mean, I was just sick when I found out that it, they click on my website and it just takes them to a desk duty URL. I'm like, oh my gosh. So to that's, be called, able to that's called floor time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and it's like the way this is, our marketing is designed with KV Core. It's like, we have a call capture system. We capture contacts. I mean, anytime we do anything in social media and run ads, I mean, I am getting their phone number, their email, their direct contact. Um, has anybody ever done a pitch report in KV Core? Oh, that's, that's amazing. Um, it's called a pitch report. You can create it in KV Core. And what you can do is you can go in and you can put in a seller's address 
and it'll show you this pyramid of exactly with that address, how many buyers that we're going to have local and nationally. And it'll just show you like based on our KD core technology, this is the amount of people we're going to be able to get exposure in, in front of your home. And, and it's like, you can test the address out and you have to do a manual listing if it's not listed currently. So I'll go in, do a manual listing, then create a pitch report from that manual listing. And then I can use that as a tool in a listing presentation to set myself apart from another brokerage saying, based on our technology, this is what I'm showing. I can get exposure in front of right now on the amount of buyers that are a match for your home. So it's almost like reverse prospecting. Um, Love that. It's, Tracy, it's really we have about three more minutes before your presentation's over. If you want to stay over, that's okay. I'll stay over. I know some will, um, but I know some people are going to ask, where are you finding the listings? Yeah, no, good question. Um, and, you know, this staging too, like I'll just touch on that real quick is, you know, the staging, what I would say on staging is it's like, you can bring a professional in. Some people will charge for staging and then they will charge the seller and then credit them back at closing. That way you're not out the staging money from the get go and the house has to close for you to credit that seller back. Now, personally, I've just really came to love staging where I go, I go to Target, I go to freaking Burlington Coat Factory. If you guys have any, they have the most amazing canvas art for like $25 modern, beautiful metallics. Um, and it's like, I have about 50 pieces of canvas on circulation at all times. And I have designer towels that are geometric. I have shower curtains and little small decor for like kitchen counters and setting tables. And I don't do any furniture. And so it's more that small decor of having them kind of clean their slate. I bring in the small decor and we spruce it up. If I need furniture, you can go to like an Ace Rent to Own or a Furniture Rent to Own store and sometimes get up to three room sets for under $400 for a month. So there's a lot of tools to stage, even if you've never done it before. And uh, staging in the three is the rule of thumb. Whenever you're putting some on an end table, put three items. On a fireplace, three items or odd, one or five. Um, that's kind of been a good tool. Um, but yeah, as far as like the actual leads, um, I would tell you like, you know, the biggest thing with leads is it's what you put out there on social media is what I feel like. I feel like social media in our generation, we are gifted because it's free. It's there. It's like, we don't have to pay for this. And it's one of those things where... I mean, social media is there for the taking and for you guys to be a, a billboard of what kind of value you can give back. And so if you don't have many things going on, go to an open house, go to a new construction staged home and act like you just got done with the showing. Act like it's your listing. You know, you, you don't have to be specific, but getting videos and getting out there, that creates that image that you're busy and that you're in these homes and it draws attention. And it's like... Um, here is, there was a couple of you guys, this is all the homework I've been telling you guys to do. Go to new construction, take photos, go do preview properties, go to open houses. Hey, I'm looking at this house for a buyer. She just said it. She repeated it. She's selling 50 homes a year. I mean, it's, and it's again, it's just fake it. It's like, it's one of those things where, um, you know, you get in for it's the messaging you're putting out. And so when we wanted to start doing flips, what I started doing is going into the nastiest, shittiest homes. And it's funny because then what happened, they see me in these shit homes, then their mom passes or gets an assisted living home. Guess who they're thinking about? Because mom has a hoarded house. They just saw me in a hoarded house. They know I go in that shit. And it's like before, it's like I wasn't putting out that messaging. And so now it's like I put out that fun shit because it makes them reference you when there is a house that maybe needs repairs maybe they need a quick offer and so you got to just create the messaging to get it out there and you don't necessarily need to show closings but it's showing what you're doing and creating action with it and creating interest and activity i love that i love that um yeah. all right so we have we're, we're on the dot tracy you probably have another appointment unless you have time for a couple of questions yeah no go ahead i definitely got a few extra minutes 
Okay. Do you want to stop the share? Cause I'm looking at myself talking. <laughs> yeah, that's what was, yeah. That's always weird. Was like, okay. All right. I'm like, Ooh, my hair don't look that bad today. <laughs> um, okay. So questions, who has questions here? Anybody, what's your ahas? How about what are your ahas? Few ahas from this. Uh, let's see, Dee Dee. I, I wrote several ahas, but I lost track of them, but there's several. Um, I think I like the, um, the watch story for the Fizbos. That was really cool because you want, it, it, let, it lets them visualize the huge difference. And I had never thought about it that way. So that was a good story and I'm gonna steal it and use it. Yay. So thank you, Tracy. Um, my question is you mentioned um, doing photography and paying for like a uh, rented uh, furniture. And I, didn't, I wasn't clear as to how that works because then you would pay up front and then you get your money back. If so, it's yeah, great question. So what you could do is if you have a home that let's say needs bigger pieces and you don't want to have that expense unless it closes, you take your liability out of it by saying, hey, seller, I think this could really tremendously help your net on closing day by us bringing in professional staging items with a stager. And what I'd like to do is if you go ahead and order it and pay for it now, I will credit you back upon a successful closing. Oh. So. So basically you're getting them to pay for it. You're getting them to order it, but you're giving them the guide of who they're going to contact. And you're going to be kind of that leader of initiating it, but okay. they're, they're paying for it. And then you can credit them back at closing and then have that tied into your commission. But the one thing, like I'm just, I'm cheap. I'm cheap by nature, no matter how much I make every year. I mean, this is how I'm raised. Like my, I negotiate at garage sales, you guys, like <laughs> put two dollars over here and then quarters over here because it's just the adrenaline rush i'm like i just love it and so that's a good thing that's a good thing and it comes from your you're an investor as well so you get into like you say the shitty properties because you know we have them look make them look beautiful and, and you have a, a practice with that as well where you go into like garage sales and get things to to stage those properties yeah. you can flip them yeah oh that's a great idea like um, Goodwills, I'll get canvas that has outdated color. I'll take spray paints of black, white, metallic, gold, or silver. I spray paint over the outdated colors, go over the texture that's already there, voila. You have a modern piece for $11. Genius, that's it's wonderful. But like um, the one thing I found about a year and a half ago, and this is a trick, like, I don't know, do you guys have any Ace Rent to Owns in your area? Yes. Like, so Ace Rent to Own, I found a professional stager was using them and they will do three full rooms for like $400 total for a full month. So I go to an Ace Rent to Own, I'll pick out a kitchen table. I'll, I got a flip coming up next week. So I'm headed there here soon. I'm like, I'll pick out a bedroom set, dining set, living room set. And I mean, under 400, they move it. That includes delivery. That includes everything. And then I bring in my stuff. And I'll tell you, when I was newer, I left my towels with the tags on from Target. I would go get the towels, stage that home with tags, and I'd take that shit back. So <laughs> it's like no excuses on staging. Uh, well, yeah. how, how do you feel about digital staging where the in, in the pictures, they show both pictures with the vacant spaces, and then you click on the next photo, and it's got those digital, that digital furniture. <laughs> Yes, that's Box Brownie. Um, boxbrownie.com. If you have a vacant home, new construction, they're the cheapest virtual staging. And then we in Nebraska just have to make sure that we document that it's virtually staged. But Box Brownie, you can do it for under, like usually under $80. So are you, can, can I confirm, are you, so I know the stager, you're having them pay for it and then you, you reimburse them at the end. Are you doing that also with Ace? Uh, the, with the rent you know, no, because it's so cheap. So, you know, it's like, I'll go in for more of a 6% listing. And because our splits are so good at EXP, basically that is just, I'll, I bump up my broker admin fee. So it's like, you know, um, some, I got some people in my organization charging 995 on their broker admin fee right now. <laughs> so, so I do like 495 to 695. 
So okay. I'll do like 695 if maybe I'm going to go to Ace Rent to Own. And just so it gives me a little bit more budgets. So then it really doesn't cut into my commission. Nice. Yep. Well, okay. what is that she mentioned? Broker what? Broker what yep. fee? Uh, it's the, like the broker admin fee, like your, your, like the, the broker fee, the commission in sky slope, your BAC. So what you're saying is you can go in and you can adjust that on your contracts. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Lady. Thank you, Tracy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It, it, and, and the, you know, when I get audited, the auditor does like to see a little bit more stability on your broker admin fee of what you charge. If you're way up and down, sometimes you'll have to justify it to an auditor. So sometimes like if you can just, like if you're comfortable with doing a 695, you kind of just keep it there all the time. And I know that's gonna help pay for photography, some small decor and uh, you know, just still keep that commission high. But like Tracy was saying, you guys gotta list your house at a price that'll cause it to sell. Otherwise, if that, expires and you don't sell and that you're out of pocket and and these listing books like this is like for under three hundred thousand. but one thing i want you to see is like um i got recommended unibind so it's u-n-i-b-i-n-d unibind company it is a company that has like this little clamp and you can make your own books at home so this is just a slick one that's about a dollar a piece and if I have, if you buy the actual Unibind, um, it's a device, I basically print these off at home, I put it in order, and then this is glue right here. And I heat it for 30 seconds on my Unibind device. Then after 30 seconds, I take it up and I clamp it and it's done. So I, and then I actually order hardback books that have like a little window cut out. And so I have other books, if I'm doing a luxury home, then that's usually like nine or $10 for the hard book. But it looks like it's actual book that you made customized for them. And you can even change it to their picture on the front if you really wanna go all in. That is where it's like, boom. Yeah, and you guys, EXP Marketing, if you go to EXP Marketing, they have a, a phenomenal seller um, uh, a presentation. It's like 25 pages, it's beautiful, it looks luxury. So what you, it's all, you heard her. She has three presentations at all times. So if someone calls, she's ready to go. And, and it's like, uh, you know, you feel free to reach out to me and message me or email if you want more scripts. Like I just, I have a lot of scripts from like Tom Ferry and it, there's just so many good scripts out there that we utilize. And I would say that's the biggest thing right now is if you're newer or if you're not getting the goals you want, when your downtime is there, take advantage of scripts. You become a master by learning those scripts, those objections, and they're all out there. I mean, you go to YouTube, Tina Cowell, she is one of the most amazing listing present presenters at EXP and globally. So if, you, if you're not following Tina Cowell on YouTube, do it. And there's just some very powerful- And then I also have role play for them every Thursday into the EXP role play on Zoom. Oh man. And several of them come, you guys. It is about what Tracy said. You're not going to be able to walk into these presentations with your shoulders strong, with your head high, if you don't know what to say. Yeah. And you do send us those scripts, uh, 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 Tracy. Um, we get a lot of scripts. <laughs> Tracy, can they, um, is Workplace a good place for them to connect with you? Oh, yeah. Or is it email? Yeah, sure. What's preferred? workplace works great well thank you you guys for just giving us time sorry we went over but love it. i love it thank you so much you guys we're gonna have this recording if you want to replay it and then tomorrow um you guys can hop on and we're gonna do a replay a watch party so tracy you're amazing such a ball of energy wisdom um man i you guys follow her and if you have referrals send them to omaha nebraska yeah, Omaha. <laughs> All right. Go, All right. go create action. Action is what produces results. Go get them, ladies. Yes. Bye. All right, guys. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy.